Hey, what is up everybody? Platform Disciple here, and today we're going to be continuing our Rift run with the three legendaries in it. But first, let's just talk about a uh, pretty big and pretty obvious change to the Infinity Wars look. Uh, so there's been a visual overhaul of the menu, and you know what? It looks a lot better. Um, I, I'm not sure what it is in particular because the color scheme has obviously been changed to a gray silver and gold um but in addition to that it just it just looks like everything's in better resolution uh i could be wrong but it looks like the, the artwork in the background here the buttons just everything looks a little cleaner somehow and that's very good um i'm very happy about this change uh i mean there's there's a couple things that are maybe a little off like the text coming out of here but with that aside um everything's looking pretty good uh, i will also say that they added two new missions or two two new sections of the campaign descendants of the dragons and sleepers of avarak if you are a newer player this is a great opportunity to grab a a uh, large amount of cards uh from those two factions and if you haven't already you should do it for the the uh, first four, but it's a lot of uh, free cards, basically. And if you're an advanced player like myself, you might be surprised. There were a couple things in the decks that I didn't have uh, playsets of, like, um, i trying to remember, like Engine of Reincarnation. I don't like the card, but uh, I only had two, and now I have three. Uh, so it's worth doing either way. Um, I did record myself playing the campaign, but uh, I, I don't know if it's worth making into a video because it was very, very, very long. Um, and most of you are probably going to play through the campaign yourselves, uh, like probably sometime in the next week or whatever, if you're, you're an active player. Um, and I don't know if there's really like... Like if if people in the comments are all saying like post this video, then I'll I will uh, I will edit it and post it. Um, but otherwise, I don't think it's worth posting. So because I don't plan on posting it, I do need to say a couple things about the new campaign uh, in terms of its quality. So first of all, I think overall, I think it was a step up from the first four. Um, like I I enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, but there were a couple things that really, really stuck out that bothered me. Um, okay, and I'll, I'll go over them. Uh, there, there were like three major things and um, some minor things, but I'll only talk about the major things. So the major things are, uh, one, the enemy player very frequently had a lot of cards that were given to them for free. Uh, to make the campaign interesting and story driven like sometimes they start with a very large character or they start with very many characters um, There's nothing wrong with that. But what is absolutely f Completely frustrating about it is that they don't use those characters um, If you want to create intrigue and challenge for newer players make it clear what the the challenge is because like <laughs> You're not teaching the the new player anything if uh, the the enemy player starts with like like uh, ten unending drones in one of the missions and literally doesn't move them ever. Like they had Luca in the command zone that uh, Luca gives plus three plus three to all those unending drones and they won't play Luca. It's not coded in. Like why is Luca in the command zone? Why are there these unending drones? It's it's like you just remove them why are they there it doesn't make any sense uh and then the other couple major issues were uh the second one which is a very very big problem is um sometimes there's the objective on the side right uh sometimes you had to do that objective to proceed other times you didn't uh i think it should never ever require you to do the objective and there's two reasons for that. One is it gives players a chance to explore and learn uh, by giving them flexibility. Uh, my my laundry is done. Okay, where we left off. Uh, 
why should you be able to do whatever you want in spite of the objectives is one gives the players creative flexibility lets them experiment with the game but the second reason and this is so so freaking important is you can't continue the mission sometimes if you screw something up like there was one of the descendants of the dragons missions you the enemy starts with a ton of flamed on characters uh and you start with a two one uh, one of many. You guys will know this mission when, when you play it. Anyways, um, on a certain turn, it might be like turn four or five, the game provides you with Gauhan and uh, G Ascended. No, not G Ascended, just G. Um, this one. G who honors the dead. And it requires you, in other words, you cannot proceed and end your turn to remove a character from your graveyard from the game. If you did not block with one of your characters, notably the 2-1, you lose the mission. You have to restart. Like, I had to restart that mission because I chose to move my 2-1 into the support zone. And that shouldn't happen. Uh, and there were a few other instances of that in the campaign. It should always let you proceed if only to make it so the campaign functions even if the player messes up. And that wasn't a misplay on my part, moving the 2-1. It was not a bad move. The only thing that made it bad is that I automatically lost the game because I couldn't continue. All right, that's probably the worst one. But the, well, well, there's one more, and this is just an annoying one. In one of the missions for Sleepers of Avarak, you are pitted against Flamed On. Plus, it's it's two Flamed Ons, one Sleepers. And in the command zone, they have uh, Infected Knight. Oh, I, I almost got it. Is it Infested Knight? Yeah, Infested Knight. They have this guy in the command zone. Anyways, uh, he's not the problem. The problem is that the deck runs a combo. It uses... Ember Starter, Fear, and Ferocity. Uh, and it plays Fear first to remove all the defenders away, and then uses Ferocity to move Ember Starter into the Assault Zone to get in for a lot of free damage. But Fear is two Sleeper's Purity. Come on. The deck that was using it is two Flamed on Purity, and I draw the line there. I know that the campaign isn't always going to follow the rules, like sometimes it gives you or the enemy free cards, but seriously, this is a mistake. You cannot have that in a deck, and it should not be in the campaign, in my opinion. Anyways, the reason it's probably in there is probably because this campaign was being programmed before the fear change. And then after the fear change, they were too lazy to take it out of the deck. And that's frustrating. All right, so that's that's my campaign rant on the problems of the campaign. Aside from those, the campaign was actually very good. So please, please fix those things, and then you have a very good campaign. And uh, what I just said also applies to the first four missions. The first four missions had uh, some similar problems. So... I hope somebody on the developing team is watching this. Like, like th this game is so close to being like good, but then then they're just stupid mistakes, stupid, stupid mistakes. Like the reason people are are gonna st stop playing this game, like newer players, is not because the the card game is too complicated or it's too difficult to ra get rare cards. Or, or many other problems that other card games suffer from, it's going to be stupid crap. Stupid, stupid crap. Like, they cannot finish the campaign because they, they, they ran into a uh, design error where they cannot end their turn and continue because they didn't get their stupid one of many 2-1 to die. All right, I'm done. I'm done, guys. Well, calm down. We're going to play a fun Rift Run game. So I'll see you in it. Okay, here we are in game. Uh, we have a pretty solid opener. They have a pretty solid looking command zone. Um, 
but we're just going to hop into it. You'll also notice that the visual update has applied to the in-game as well, which is cool. Um, uh, you. Good news is we've got the overcharged bolt for Taiga. I think we're just going to play Wealthy Noble this turn so that we can really set ourselves up for success in the future. Uh, it, one option would be to overcharge bolt the... Ugh, well, we can't overcharge the bolt it anymore without losing a ton of value. So we're going to kill Taiga. We're not going to overcharge it. We're just doing the four damage. Um, and I'm going to actually play Rubble Golem because it's going to get uh, 12 health at least here, which is pretty good. Um, and then we're going to use our Hubris or our Ashes to Ashes to handle Striker of Solace, and we'll be able to defend with one of these guys. Interestingly enough, they moved it off the battlefield, um, and they moved this Portrone as a defense zone. A little weird. It's a little weird, but I, I know that they were just trying to dodge the removal because they thought I could play it that turn, but we're actually going to play it this turn. Um, I, th I think we will just use our Humble. Oh, shoot. I just remembered. Stupid music. Um... <laughs> ah! Ah, well, I'm not going to re-record it because we're already in game, uh, but I like to have the music off because I, I find it to be uh, repetitive after a certain point because I've played like so much of this game that I've, I've, I've heard the music enough and I know a lot of you probably have as well. And if you wish there was music in the background of this video, the, now there's no music, so you can actually go onto a new tab of YouTube or Spotify or whatever and put on your own music at whatever volume you please. So you, you can see why I might have done that. All right, uh, I think we're going to defend with our Splitter Light. Oh, Shield 1. Isn't that something? There are very few times when I... When shield actually is like poses a threat, but we just use our humble and we saved our ashes to ashes and now we can't deal with this. That's really annoying. Um, I mean, we can actually use Aether Acolyte to handle it, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, hmm. Uh, uh, hmm. I think we'll do this. Because I want to get the Genesis Spy to start putting uh, doo-doo in his deck that he can't get rid of. And I've said this in the past, but... Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Man, it lived with one health. Um. All right. Uh, I want to play Genesis Spy, but he might block it. Uh, I think I think we'll just leave things like this. Actually, just in case, maybe we'll do that in case the um, flame ramp comes out. Uh, but like I've said in the previous videos in this series, uh, no matter how bad the early game goes for us, we have uh, a substantial advantage in the late game because of Martyr of Death and Vasir and Subjugated Dragon. Uh, we have a lot of big bombs in the late game. Um, let's see. I think we're gonna do that. And I think we are going to kill this, hopefully get in for damage. Um, well, Ashes to Ashes, the Ferocious Flyer. And we're just gonna build up a board state. I'm, I think we can play aggressively this game. Ew, dodged it. That's really too bad. Um, we're still in fine shape, though. But Jubilee is really annoying because we can't target it. Um, hmm. We have no abilities, which is too bad. Uh, we're going to draw a card, I think. Maybe we set up our Unstable Bomb Bot? Uh, that seems smart to me. And we're gonna move our um, little Timmy bot there. And I think 
this is a game where I actually want to use Martyr of Death for the 15-15 flying as opposed to using him for his effect. Because uh, Martyr of Death can just block these, or I can use Martyr of Death to start attacking. Um, I could also just play Vasir. Uh, I have more characters, more disposable characters than he does. Like, I don't care if I sacrifice something like Little Timmy Bot or uh, Splitter or Light. Um, whereas sacrificing any of these characters is actually a pretty big deal. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll pay. Or will we? We don't get to pay vis play Vasir if we if we pay. Uh, so we will not pay, and we're gonna play Vasir. And then next turn we can sacrifice our Splitter Light or our little Timmy Bot, depending on whether we'd rather have two more characters that we could sacrifice in the near future, or whether we'd rather just draw a card. Um, drawing cards is kind of really nice, but I don't know. And by the way, the reason we kept out our Rubble uh, Golem is because if he put the Flame Ram in the Assault Zone, it would live. Um, I would like to sacrifice a character. I would like to sacrifice... Little Timmy Bot. And... Um, he's probably going to sacrifice Flame Ram. And we can start attacking. I think this is good. Reason I'm actually defending with our Martyr of Death, in spite of the fact that we have a much more dangerous looking board, is because Flamed On has so many charged characters that we really have to watch out uh, for our health throughout the whole game, because if we get too low, um, he can burst us. He's probably going to box Vasir. Oh! Ah. Okay. <sighs> okay, what do we do here? Can we can we still outrace him or do we need to actually blow things up? So we can't get hit by this much more. We might just blow everything up. That sucks. Um, yeah, we'll blow everything up. I'll play it Demoralize. Uh, I'll draw a card. Oh! Do we blow everything up? Uh, we have to pay nine to get Subjugated Dragon online, and our Wealthy Noble will die. But... I think we, we th I think we have to blow everything up. So, yeah, we're gonna play demoralize, like I said before. Oh, that lives. Ah, ah, ah! I, I, I misplayed. Really badly. Okay, well, we can lightning blast here. And we have enough to set up for Subjugated Dragon, but we're not going to because Mysterious Box is actually just going to get rid of it constantly. Um, we'll boost this guy in front in case there's a charge character that comes out. Ew, we misplayed so bad. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, I wanted to put out the Defense Golem in, in case he played a flying character. Ew, at least we get this trade. Mass death. It's not bad. It's not a bad move for us. Um, I think we'll wait a turn on mass death. Uh, hopefully this is enough. Can this... Hmm... We're gonna... We're gonna risk it. Oh man! Ah. Well, we lost. 
Um, I played really badly, or really poorly. Uh, we'll do one more, and hopefully I don't lose it. If I do lose it, I have saved up quite a bit of IP, and I can buy it, buy the whole deck. Uh, but it would just it would just be really too bad that uh, this rift run that I decided to feature from start to end uh, turns out to be one that I, I only get four wins. Oh sweet, my game didn't crash even though I kept recording. Uh, maybe the patch fixed it, but in the past I was having a lot of difficulty uh, in, in the past couple weeks with Fraps and Infinity Wars together. Uh, he's got triple exile, so the, the, our main thing that we gotta worry about is he's probably got Dissension in his deck, and for those of you who play a lot of Rift Run, Dissension is potentially one of the best cards in Rift Run, like, outright. Uh, if you wanna play Rift Run and you have the opportunity to pick Dissension, seriously do it. Uh, it it'll, it'll win you games for free. Um, I think we're going to do an upgrade here, uh, in case he plays both of these. Um, and we're going to boost the power of our Aether Acolyte. Alright, so this is nice for us because we get to keep our Splitter Light and we get a free 10-10. Um, that's something that's going to let us pressure the board a lot. Um, I could play... I could play... Wealthy Noble to just ramp us, or I could play both Aether Acolytes, uh, and then we can really, really go for aggressive trades with Martyr Golem, and I think that's what I want to do. Because we're in a position where we have a lot of power right now, relative to him. Because, uh, his command zone, with the exception of Devil of Despair, is pretty high cost. And Devil of Despair, because we have these strong characters, is not going to activate its consume effect. So... Alright, so we just get in for just tons of free damage. And uh, he made the mistake of um, thinking that uh, sacrificing... Uh, infected Devil would give him the 8-8. The uh, I don't know really why it doesn't, but that's a, a lesson learned, a lesson that you can only learn the hard way. Um, so what can, what, what can you say? Uh, and we're gonna play our Martyr Golem. We're gonna have our Splitter Light at the front in hopes of trading with Splatterer. Uh, but if it's not at the front, then Martyr Golem will still be alive to trade with those, so. Looks like our Martigol might just live, which is pretty sweet. So we can heal it up. Um, yeah, we're gonna heal it once. We're gonna pump this guy. And... I want to hubris of the strong one of his characters, but we don't know which one of his commanders, and I, I'm almost certain that one of his commanders is gonna come out this turn. I don't know which one's gonna come out. So we're gonna go for uh, Demon of Solitude because it's the easier target. Uh, I received a text, but we can look at that later, or maybe not if I get a million of them. Um, but I think we're, I think, I think we're ready to end the turn. He's probably gonna put this in the front, but we can't really do much about it. Reckless Abandon. So the good news is that he's drafted a lot of garbage cards that don't help him. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, he, he drafted like Defiant Trickster and he drafted uh, reckless abandon. So I think we've just straight up won this at this point. I don't think he can recover uh, unless he plays dissension. But dissension is nine cost, and we won't have to worry about it. So fourteen 
even if we heal up our Martyr Golem to full, that will trade. So we're not gonna. Uh, we're gonna move this in front because we want our uh, Splitter Light to die more than we want our Aether Accolade to die. Uh, we're gonna draw some cards. And we might as well play our Wealthy Noble. And that's probably GG, because he hasn't discarded a Dissension, and Dissension, like I said, is going to cost him um, 9 resources, and he doesn't have those 9 resources, so I think we're alright. And we're going to shuffle away our Demoralize, because this game isn't going to go on long enough for morale to matter. Yep, he conceded. Alright, so we... Lost one, and then we won one, so I, I'm I'm okay with this. Uh, and I didn't expect to go too far with this deck. Um, for those of you who were wondering, like, I think my average win rate is around seven wins, and this is looking like it could be potentially average or just a little below average. Um, and sometimes I, sometimes I get three wins. Sometimes I get 20 wins. Um, Last week I got 20, 22 or something. Uh, but this this deck, even though it has some pretty awesome cards in it, it might actually just not be the best Rift Run deck. And also I might have played really poorly that first game. Okay, and uh, it's been fun everyone. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.